Proverbs chapter 22 and in verse number 4. The Bible tells us there. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Father, we again thank you for your word and pray that you will bless our time in your word tonight. May it be used to lift up our hearts and help us, Lord, to be able to look, our, look at our lives according to your standard, that we may walk humbly before you, and that, Father, we may fear you, and that, Lord, you would be able to bless our lives. Father, we just ask this now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. As we have studied the phrase, the fear of the Lord, here in Proverbs, we have seen the word humility show up in many of these verses as well. And these two things, they go together. If we were to be truly humble, we would need to fear the Lord. Because the one produces the other. The fear of the Lord helps to produce humility in our life. If we fear the Lord, we'll be humble. You know, and, and it will be a true humility. You know, not, not, not like the pastor who said, you know, buy my book, The Three Humblest Men in the World, and how I led the other two to Christ. <laughs> humility is a fragile thing. It's one of those things that when you think you have it, you don't. Humility is a virtue that is of great price in God's eyes. God values humility. In fact, if you'll turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 57, and verse number 15. Isaiah, chapter 57. And verse number 15. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. For thus, for thus saith the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. He dwelleth with those who are humble. A humble and contrite spirit. When God convicted us of our sin, when we came to trust Christ as our personal Savior, we had to come to Him humbly and contrite. That's true repentance. And in James chapter 4 and verse number 6 there in the New Testament, James chapter 4 and in verse number 6. <coughs> Excuse me. James chapter 4 and verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the Humble. <laughs> Humility and the fear of the Lord are one, are the two great characteristics of true godliness. If we are going to live godly, we need to fear the Lord and we need to be humble. It's the fear of the Lord that distinguishes true humility from a moral or fo false humility. Fear of the Lord comes to us when we see God's greatness and His purity 
and his, protect, and, and his perfection. The high and lofty one. When we have a vision of the Lord that Isaiah had in Isaiah chapter 6, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, that's truly humbling. And we have to get a vision of God that way in our life. God, as I, as I, as I said in a Bible study here recently, God, God is usually pictured as the old grandfather that comes to visit. You know, the old grandfather that comes to visit. You know, the grandkids love him. They come to flock to him. They hug him and they give him love. And he gives them a dollar and gives them anything they want. And many, many people have a picture of God that way. He is the loving grandfather. You know, ask him for something. He'll give it to you. Let me ask you a question. Have you asked God for something that he didn't give you? Was there a reason why he didn't give it to you? Absolutely. Because he knows better than we. He's the high and lofty one. And we need to be like Isaiah who said, Woe is me, for I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips in the midst of a nation of unclean lips. When Isaiah saw that vision of the Lord high and lifted up, he was humbled. We need to see God as the true, righteous, holy God who loves us. Not just the God who loves us. Over many decades, the preaching of the word of God has emphasized the love of God without necessarily emphasizing the holiness of God. And righteousness of God. God is a loving God. Don't get me wrong. But God is also a holy God. Amen. God expects perfection. <clears throat> something we cannot obtain. Unless we give ourselves to him. And humble ourselves before him. In the fear of of the Lord. And we have to picture the Lord that way. We see God's greatness, his purity, and his perfection, and we compare that to our lowliness, our filthiness, and our manifold imperfections. How do we stack up to the Almighty God? We don't. Even if we're saved, we can't stack up. Not in this life. Because we still carry around that nature of sin. Even though we have the divine nature in us as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we still have that sinful nature. Spirit warreth against the flesh, and the flesh against the spirit, Paul said. And that war is a constant, everyday battle. <clears throat> From our first thought in the morning to our last thought at night, and sometimes even in our dreams. That battle continues on. And we can't have the victory in that battle without the Lord. There is no way. We cannot do it on our own. And we have to be able to look at ourselves that we don't think of ourselves better than we ought to think of ourselves. See, the fear of the Lord is another nature than our human one that comes from God. That has to be developed within us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get that divine nature, 
We receive the capacity, if you will, to fear the Lord when we receive the Holy Spirit of God when we get saved. But it needs to be developed as we walk with the Lord. And to develop this fear of the Lord, we need to walk reverently and reverencing God's majesty, His greatness. You know the old commercials back, way back when I was a kid, when E.F. Hutton talks? (laughs) People listen? I wish it were more that way about God today. But the psalmist writes that God spoke and it was done. God said, let there be and there was. Out of nothing. And I don't know a human being that can stack up to that. Even though they try really hard. And the so-called science of trying to create life But even in the cloning and even in that science, there has to be some sort of genetic material to work with. Genetic material that could only be created by the almighty God out of nothing. No man could create that genetic material. No way in the world. His majesty and his authority to walk in the fear of the Lord and to be humble is to submit ourselves to the commands and the word that God gives us and live by that word every single day and to be at the disposal of his providence with all humility. If God said, if God said, Trevor Hubs, I want you to go to Africa and start churches and reach people there for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If God truly called me to do that, then Robin would be packing. I'd be going out to raise support and I'd be going to Africa. Because that's what God wants me to do. But God also wants me to witness to my neighbor. How many of us as believers have a difficulty with that? Some of us are more willing to go to Africa than we are to witness to our neighbor. I don't know about your neighbors, but mine are pretty nice. Some of the nicer neighbors that I've lived next to, to be quite honest. We mustn't think of ourselves too highly to be and have humility before God and to be able to have this humility before other people. For where the fear of the Lord is, the Bible says, there is humility. They go together. In our text, humility and the fear of the Lord brings forth great blessings. They are plentiful and they are bountiful. The first one mentioned there in our text is that of riches. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor. You better hold on a second. 
You're not going to you're not going to tell me that, you know, if you give five thousand dollars to the Grace Baptist Church, you can go down to Roman Motors. You can pick out your car and you can pick out what color it is and God's going to give it to you. No, I'm not going to tell you that. Because I can't find it in the word of God. When God talks about riches, they're not always material, and they're not always monetary. Because you may remember, I have prayed to God for a million dollars. I still don't have that million dollars. I think it's one of those things that God is telling me, you can't handle a million dollars. It will change you. And you know what? It just might. I wouldn't know until I had a million dollars. <laughs> the prosperity theologists got it wrong when he teaches that God wants everyone to be materially rich. But there are the spiritual riches there are the spiritual riches of heaven the spiritual riches of the word of god the spiritual riches of the presence of god sometimes we forget how rich we are because god has promised us i will never leave thee nor forsake thee when we go through the difficulties of life, the struggles of life, many of you here, you understand that tonight, having gone through those struggles and going through those struggles, physical struggles, emotional struggles, spiritual struggles. But if the Lord walks with you, if you have the Lord in your heart, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be there to walk with you through the terrible, troubled times of life. And in fact, the Lord sometimes carries you through those times of life because you don't have the strength to walk yourself. Amen. How wonderful that is. Amen. There's nothing greater. The psalmist writes in Psalm 34 and in verse number 9. Psalm 34 and verse number 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. As David wrote in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I won't have need of anything. If the Lord is my shepherd and I fear the Lord... The Lord will take care of me. And if you fear the Lord and know him as your Savior, the Lord will take care of you. Christ tells us in Matthew 6 and verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God knows what we need. God knows we need clothes to wear. God knows we need food to eat. God knows we need shelter, especially here in Kansas, in the thunderstorm season. I thought I went through thunderstorm seasons in Arizona. No, no, no. They're a cakewalk compared to some around here. Because in Arizona, they only last about 20 minutes. You know, I just, and they're gone. <laughs> and the sun comes out, and it goes back to 105. And it's, <laughs> it's great.
The Bible says if we put the Lord first, if we put furthering His kingdom first in our life, He'll take care of us and provide everything we need. Even when we don't think we need it. Because God knows what we need. Even when we don't. There's honor. A spiritual honor. You may never get your picture in the paper for giving a million dollars to charity. You know, with a big cardboard check and everything. But if you humble yourself before the Lord, the Bible says in due time, he will lift you up. James chapter 4 and verse 6. And also in James chapter 4 and verse 10. If we humble ourselves before God, he will lift us up in due time. As believers in Christ, we gain the privileges and the promises of the covenant of grace when we come to trust Christ as our personal Savior. And they are many and multiple. And we have, that we have made with God when we get saved. We enter into that covenant of grace. And anyone can join in that covenant of grace with God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, shall be saved. When we have salvation, we have entered into the covenant of grace with God. And God's grace saves our soul. Amen. And it's a great honor to know that God loves us and cares about us. 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 15, I think it says, Casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. Sometimes we get into the difficulties of the life. We can't see the forest for the trees. And we think that our struggles, God doesn't care. No, God cares greatly. And sometimes God cares more than we do. And God works and acts on our behalf. And when our hearts get burdened and when our hearts get troubled and when our hearts get heavy, we can take our cares and we can cast them upon him. Because he does care. Direct line to God for the believer in Christ is always open. It's never busy. You never get put on hold. And last of all, there is life. Life that is eternal. Life that we have as believers in Christ now. We are sons of God now if we know Christ is our personal Savior and we have the blessings of having eternal life now. Not a second blessing, not when we die, we'll have eternal life. Right now. Paul, Paul writes, is moved by the Holy Spirit of God in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 8. Now, I want you to notice there in that first phrase that the, that the Bible does not say you're not supposed to exercise. Because <laughs> the first phrase there of verse number eight says, for bodily exercise profiteth little. Not at all, little. And compared with the eternal things, I should take my own advice, by the way. I, I need to do that. But more important than bodily exercise, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Humility and the fear of the Lord, the two characteristics of true godliness. True godliness. 
is profitable in all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Even in the struggles of this life, we can have happiness and joy. We're talking about that on Tuesday night. No matter what our circumstances are, no matter what we're going through, God can give us great joy. And we can be happy. Sometimes it comes down to just a simple choice. Sometimes we choose our attitude. I know teenagers do. And the Bible says that if we follow the Lord, we will truly be blessed of him. Turn back with me if you're following along in Proverbs, a couple of verses there. To finish up our thoughts here tonight. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 16. Solomon talking here to his son, probably his son Rehoboam, as he is teaching him here from Proverbs and talking here about wisdom. Having wisdom. Godly wisdom. And he says there, the blessings of having that godly wisdom, the length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. In Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse number 21. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs 21 and verse 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. So is it worth is it worth it to live humbly in the fear of the Lord? Amen. I believe absolutely. Because the rewards are much greater than this old world can ever offer. as we live for him. We'll have one more week in this study in Proverbs chapter number 23. And I hope you have been blessed by it, able to get something you can take home with you and be able to chew on for a little bit. I appreciate your time and attention tonight.